Praise the Lord. First <clears throat> Kings chapter 21. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's see one. Thank you. I just want to read two verses out of this chapter and then we'll move on <clears throat> to another chapter. Chapter 18. Hallelujah. Everybody got it? Amen. Amen. All right, stand with me for the reading of God's word, if you would. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 17 of chapter 21. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to Porthesi. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for the presence that we felt in the song service. Amen. And God, I just ask that you remain here in this service, Lord, the remainder of it. Glory to God. Continue, Lord, to be Lord and Master over this service. Hallelujah. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon this body of clay, these lips of clay, Lord, that you would use me today for your glory. Knowing every year, Lord, it sets under the sound of her voice this morning. Every spirit, glory to God, to receive from heaven this day. And Father, we never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. But we ask it all in the name above every name. Yes, Lord, the name where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. The name of Jesus, glory to God, as we give you praise and glory. And the church can say amen if you want to. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to go to 1 Kings chapter 18 for just a, few, just a couple of scriptures. Hallelujah. <coughs> I have been literally battling with something in my spirit for quite a while now. Ever since the things happened during the church, I've been wrestling and I've been battling with this and I've been struggling with this. As I took this trip this past week, I asked God in His time to speak to me and to show me and to help me. Okay? God spoke to me different times about different things in my life. Sometimes he speaks to me through scripture. And other times he speaks to me with an audible voice that I hear. Amen. And sometimes he speaks to me through dreams. Okay? I had a dream while I was gone. And in that dream I was prophesied to. I'm not going to tell you who prophesied to me. But they prayed for me and they prophesied to me. And they spoke these words of prophecy. They said you are being cut off. And whenever I awoke the next day, the only thing I could remember in that dream was the words cut off. And I said, God, what are you trying to show me here? What, what's going on, Lord? This, the words cut off. I know in, the, in Scripture we read of people that was cut off from God, but it was they were cut off because of sin. They, they were cut off because of things that they'd done that were, they were in sin. And I began to search myself, and I began to look at myself, Lord, where, where have I sinned that, that I'm being cut off from you? And I wrestled with that, and I wrestled with that, and I even, I even told my sister and Rob about it. They've been praying with me about it. But the other night, God took me to some scripture that I'm fixing to share with you today. It didn't mean that I was being cut off from God. It meant that the preacher within me was being slowly cut off. Not from God, but by the enemy. Come on. Bless you, Lord. Don't let your minds wander this morning. Keep your minds on what I'm saying. Because we all need to be aware Amen. of the spirit. That operate to silence the man of God. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's his main purpose. Yeah. Is to shut up the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 18. Bless the Lord. For just a little bit of background here so you know what I'm talking about. In 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 4. But before I read this scripture. You remember that Ahab was in the vineyard 
that didn't belong to him. Uh, amen. And later in this message, you'll find out how Ahab acquired that vineyard. He went and he asked Naboth to buy the vineyard. He wanted to purchase it because it was close to his home. But Naboth refused him. He said, God forbid him to do that. But he ended up possessing that vineyard. And you'll learn later in this message how he done that. But in 1 Kings chapter 18, talking about the phrase cut off, okay? For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. The phrase cut off in that scripture means killed. If you'll go down to verse 13 of that same chapter, Obadiah asked Elijah, Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew? And the other scripture used the word cut off. But in this scripture, it used the word slew. When Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred and a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them bread and water. Now I want to clarify something. This is not the same Jezebel that is spoken of in Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Amen. Amen. In chapter 2 of Revelation God was speaking a message to be wrote and sent to the church Thyra Tower. And there was a lady that was operating in that church that they called Jezebel. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 says this. Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, as I said, this is not the same Jezebel that's spoken of during 1 Kings, Amen, chapter 18. <clears throat> but a woman in the local church at Thyra Tower, we have no more authority to make the two women the same than we have to make Joseph of Genesis and the one in Matthew 1 and 18 the same. Amen. Bless you, in this message, you'll find out that later on, after what Jezebel did, by the way, in, in 1 Kings 18 and 4, this was the first recorded or first record of evil power being used in Israel to destroy true religion, and it was done by a woman. 